All right, it's the end of the session. I'm here with Granny. Isn't that a great name for a little pipsqueak like you? Sit. Uh, and this is Granny's Roadmap to Success. Um, I've got some treats here. So if you see Granny uh, pawing at me, I'm trying to keep her in the shot. So, um, all right. So we started off talking a little bit about exercise. Now, she's a little dog. Uh, Yorkies, obviously, aren't, aren't as high energy as like a Vichler or something like that. Um, but exercise is important. The Guardian here does a good job of letting her sniff on walks. She goes for two walks a day. They're not super duper long walks, but she's a super, not a very super big dog, so she doesn't need them. Uh, but when you think about going for a walk, the best thing to think about is thinking for duration rather than making it back to your home. Because then anything that so slows you down, we look at as a negative. But for dogs, sniffing is actually burns more energy in the locomotion of actually walking. So when we walk, as long as the dog is safe to do so, letting them sniff down uh, is a great thing to do. Um, and so uh, the walks, uh, keep on doing the walks. Uh, remember when she's rambunctious, that probably means she needs a little exercise. So that'd be a great time to go for a walk, play a little fetch. If you want to teach her, if you like to bring you that little uh, egg, I would call that, make that a game of fetch. So when I teach a dog to fetch, I say the word fetch three times. First of all, I show the dog, or I have the little egg. I throw it and don't let the dog see you have treats when you do this, or you might have to use lower value treats because these are really high value. So show her to her. As you throw it, say the word fetch. When she goes and picks it up with her mouth, say fetch, and then have a treat here. And provided she brings it all the way back to you, put the treat in her mouth and then say the word fetch a third time. So I call this riding the wave. Sometimes dogs are not traditional dogs, which Yorkies are not. When they do come and start uh, and they uh, bring you the egg or whatever it is they want to play with you, if you can pause the TV and play, ride that wave when they want to, when their want to level is high. After a while, you'll be able to do that as a maintenance uh, form of exercise. Just play fetch for like two minutes and then deplete that excess energy. Um, we also talked about use uh, scent games. That's something you can go to Google and just Google scent, smell, scent games. And there's a whole bunch of variants of it. A lot of it would be talking about cadavers and, you know, just you just want some stuff. You can play hide and seek or hide an object. The dog's got to run around your house and find it with their nose. Very physically draining to use their nose. And the last thing we talked about was using a snuffle mat. So uh, you can make a snuffle mat. If you make it, it make sure you can't see the bottom. I saw one person DIY and it was looked like a it looked like thing was balding. It should like a, a floor mat on with shag carpet on steroids is what it should look like. You feed the dog its food out of there, and they have to use their nose to find it. Move the tassels off the side and then lick up the piece of food. She's a uh, Yorkie. They usually eat pretty fast. So this will help her slow down eating. It helps her. She also uh, see how she moves away. So she likes she likes it, but she's still not 100% certain who I am. And she's saying, I would rather have the treats than the petting. And so she moves off, and that's her way of saying, no, I'm not really that interested. And she's looking where the treats were, even though I have a handful of treats here. Um, so uh, the Snuffle Mat, get one of those on Amazon or Chewy or make one. Come. Come. Remember, like I said in the video above, always put the treat in the mouth first and then say the command word after. Not good come, not what a good dog, not her name, just the word come or down or whatever it is. Yes, you got one of your whiskers is going up. I want to I want to move it out, down for you, but I don't think you're going to like that, so we're going to let it go. All right, um, good eye contact she's giving. Um, all right, so we also talked about rules, the importance of rules. We talked about dog psychology and how dogs learn. Remember that rewarding a dog by breaking a rule, since she said please, this can mean please, um, I gave her a treat. But remember, rewarding a dog by helping them break a rule is a really poor way of uh, rewarding them. Matter of, fact, matter of fact, it's confusing and frustrating for them. So rules are things that should be off limits. And if you decide later on you would like to have the dog on the couch, which is one of the rules we talked about, it's because you felt like it, not because she was asking for it, because she did something nice. It's just because I like, feel like sharing my couch with you and I had no influence on the dog. Otherwise, the dog will start keep on trying to get back up to get that reward. And for dogs, the higher they sit, the more rank or status they have. Now remember, for rules, the rules need to be in place for a minimum of 66 days. So I always tell my clients, rules should be in place for a minimum of three months or as long as the problem's going on. All my clients come back to me after three months, you said three months, I'm like, is the problem gone? No, then as long as the problem's going on, it's still in fact. So now we can always go, uh, one of the first rules for her is not being allowed on the furniture. When you have a dog that barks a lot, um, the rules are, uh, the book says no furniture and no free pets. We'll talk about no free pets with petting with a purpose here in a second. Um, now she's a little dog, the guardian wants a lap dog and she jumps up on her and kind of snuggles and demands attention by jumping up on her lap. So it's the other reason why I went away with no furniture. Also because she sometimes gets up here uh, I think part of it, she's going to the kitchen so she can see the, where the guardian is, but also the doors over here and just can be confusing for them. So if you go to Amazon, get those X mats, you probably can tear them in half and put just the half sections on the front of the couch to keep her from jumping up on it. And after about three months of her not getting on the couch, she's less likely to want to do so. Now I'd also get her a dog, bat, uh, dog bed. 
because the guardian here is single, uh, just her and the dog, I would put the dog bed right here in the L, uh, in the crook of this L-shaped couch. The way you uh, teach a dog to go get it, uh, to go to the dog bed on command, I show the dog I have a treat, throw the treat on the bed. When she licks it up, say Jamaica or Cabo or whatever the name of the dog bed, come up with funny command words. Remember, dogs should read your facial expressions. So come up with fun words, motivates them for the rest of their life. So what I do is for about 10 treats, I drop a treat, she goes and licks it up. As long as she has one paw or more on the dog bed, I say the word Jamaica or whatever the word is. So I did 10 treats in a row, after a while, I was like, man, this is an awesome place. And I wait for the dog to not pay attention and I leave a treat there. Now, I have light gray pants. And so that's a good illustration. Uh, dogs, I, they're colorblind. They don't see, they have something blue, gray, green, uh, blue, gray, yellow sort of hue. And so if I have a really busy pattern or it's too dark, the dog might not see the, the treat on it. So I like getting light gray, white, or light cream as the color, no pattern. And I prefer the ones that are more like a, uh, well, uh, these have ridges in them or, or corduroy, but I prefer just like a cushion without any extra pattern. So that, and the light color, I can leave a treat there when the dog's not paying attention. She's like, oh, treat, and she runs over and licks it up. Now, so that's the second way. The first way that I top the 10 treats and I wait for her to be distracted and I leave one there without her watching me and don't say a word. When she sees it, she'll run over there. As soon as she licks it up, you say the word Jamaica again. The third way I do it is I lead them into it, put them on a sit or a down and then pop the treat in their mouth and say the word Jamaica or whatever the word is. So these are three ways to entice her to want to go there. The next stage is when she goes there on her own, then I drop a treat or if I don't have a treat, I reach over and pet her and say Jamaica. Or if I'm too far away and if I get up, she's gonna get up anyway, I would just say the word Jamaica. Now those are gonna be less uh, impactful the way that I, in the order I just said them. So treat best, uh, petting uh, second, uh, uh, saying the word third. Uh, but we wanna reinforce it at least a little bit. Sit, come. Now, if she does this running off sort of thing, you can do that tr that treat trick that I showed you. Here, we'll, we'll, we'll move her away and I'll show you again. So uh, I'm gonna wait for her to come back in the shot. I'm gonna ask her, or not instead of asking her. And what she does, I'm gonna give, let her chew on this treat and then I'm gonna reach over and pet her while she's chewing on the treat to prevent her from moving away. So if you see there's a relative that she constantly moves away from, you can do this sort of a trick and get her conditioned getting that. And maybe even say amigos or compadre or whatever you, I like to use Spanish words, uh, but whatever words you wanna use, so that be, creates a command word. So then this relative that she he, she goes to visit, we can say compadre, and she comes up and knows that compadre means you're gonna hold a treat, I get to chew on it or gum it because I don't have any front teeth. And then, uh, and you're gonna pet me a little bit at the same time. And after a while, the petting will suffice without needing to get the treat because they get a behavior pattern. Um, okay. Other rules that we went over, uh, at the end of the 90 days uh, or whatever the period of time is that she's allowed, not allowed the furniture, then it's an invitation because I want to and only for good behavior. So invite her up, she starts barking, she would lose the privilege. You invite her up and she goes down to get a drink of water, she would need another invite to get back up here. This is your couch, you're just being generous to share it with her. Now the, the bed in the bedroom, that could be different, but I, what I would say is when you're going to bed, she's not on the bed until you call her up. She gets down, immediately stop what you're doing and go and uh, don't pick her up. Go and kind of, well, this is how I usually ask dogs to get off the furniture, is I kind of escort them to the edge so that they do the work themselves. Don't push them off, just escort to the edge. Then you get, you know, you go through your nighttime ritual. When you get in bed and you're ready, then you invite her back up. I don't think you'll need a treat. Come. All right. Um, other uh, other uh, uh, rules, uh, not being uh, allowed in the kitchen where preparing food, not being allowed in this L shape uh, around the couch when Ava's eating food. Um, the guardian who's gonna, is gonna feed her uh, only after the guardian eats something in five or more bites. Piece of chip, uh, cracker, celery, that all works. Carrot, uh, by the way, carrots and broccoli ward off two types of cancer in dogs. So uh, I give my dog little, this size, little baby carrots, maybe once or twice a week. And then just once uh, every two weeks, get a piece of broccoli and demolish it raw. Uh, just on top of her food. Uh, it gives them a little bit gas at times, but I'll deal with a little gas down a little bit one time with my dogs. Um, uh, also, you know about rawhides? No, they're bad. Okay. Um, and so uh, since you like those bully sticks, I would have some of those. And uh, the ones I get are from The Natural Dog Company. Make sure it's the, otherwise it's a company that makes bombs for their, dog, their nose. But have those bully bites. And if you get the low odor or odor free, go to their website or find a place to do it. Um, you'll, they'll be more expensive, but you'll know why. And she's a little dog, so you can get it. Those little bully bites will probably last you six months. And so now if there's somebody, if you go to visit someone, giving her something to chew on can be really beneficial. Um, uh, chewing is a way to release some stress. Um, so, uh, <laughs> all right, so let me see. Other rules, you have to sit before I uh, let you out of, uh, before we let you out of the, your play area or your 
where the hangout area. And if you want to assign a command word for that, just go over there, toss the tree in. When she looks it up, call that one Cabo or whatever the word is you want to use. And so every time she goes, you say eventually say Cabo and she'll run to go straight in there just like the dog did. That's why we say assign a command word. So the next rule is I go to the door and I tell the dog to sit one time. If the dog doesn't sit, I walk away and sit down. It has three seconds to sit. If it doesn't sit, I walk away, sit down, wait one minute and set a timer, then go back and command her only one time. The more you say it, the less you mean it. Get out of a habit of repeating command words. Sure, if you do it w the way I want, the first time you get rewarded, every, you miss the boat, you waited too long. You, uh, you have to wait for me to come back around it a second time. That creates a little bit more concentration, makes it more impactful, and makes the dog want to do it. Now, she didn't go away here because I still have the treats. Now, she knows that, uh, but she's just, it's repetition. So um, eventually, when you, she, when you tell her to sit, she does sit, fly the door open as fast as you can. But if she doesn't sit the first time within three seconds, walk away, make sure you're seated, wait one minute. Next time, walk away two minutes, four minutes, eight minutes. Keep double length of time until eventually she sits right away. Um, now she has a little play area. And for the play area, woof, or you know, come up with a, a command word. Remember, every time she speaks, pat her and say that. Now you do have to be a little bit careful because that is a demand for attention. You can assign the command word for the action, but it also is associated with the intent. And so sometimes that can get a little confusing. So uh, if you do it, try to do it in every capacity. If she barks at a dog on the street or a car or anything she barks at, then we'd say argument or whatever the word is that we want to assign for that. Um, so for the play area, Remember to not let her out unless she's calm. Now, I have a video on my website. Uh, well, I don't think that one will actually work. Um, I, this is kind of a customized situation. So remember, I'm just going to describe it. So basically, when you come home, she's all excited. Remember, excited is not the same thing as happy. Come home. She's in the area in the bedroom. Come back and go, go over. Come. So thought to, about moving away, but the treats are still here. So she's starting to change her dynamic a little bit. So basically go into the area where she's at, change clothes, do whatever your ritual is, and just wait for her to settle down. She's gonna be barking and jumping up and don't definitely don't reward her for that bark. And then base or mark it. And basically just wait for her to settle down. Eventually she'll settle down like this. When she does, start the process of going to let her in, let her out. Now, I just remember something I said earlier. If you have difficulty at this stage, then recreate it when you're at home. You've been at home, you watch TV an hour, go in there, put her in the area, come in here, sit, watch TV for five minutes, go back in there and repeat these next steps. It, ideally, you wanna do this when you come home, but remember, when you have a dog that has a doesn't behave the way you want, ask yourself, have I trained the dog how to behave in that situation? The answer is almost always no. Second thing is, how can I recreate that situation the easiest version possible? And this is really what I do for a living with all my clients. Once I've created an easiest version possible, I break it down into small individual steps. The first step in this case is standing up and taking a first step to walking towards where she, the, the baby gate is. You will not, don't plan on making it the whole way. So don't, when you're doing this, make sure you go to the bathroom first, have a drink and or stuff ready to go. So you'll stand up and she'll probably get excited and then you just sit back down and pull out your phone and watch a little bit more TV. When she settles down on her own, we're not telling her to settle down. When she does, then we get up and start the process again. At first, you'll probably only be able to partially stand up or even go like this, and that'll be enough. She gets excited. Eventually, you kind of raise your butt a little bit, and eventually you get to the point where you stand up, and then you start taking a step, and as soon as she gets excited at any level of excitement, you back off, sit down. Now, she could, I guess, get up, but if she gets up, and you, there's a difference between getting up and being excited about it. Uh, eventually, you'll be able to get up, you'll be able to walk over there, you'll be able to reach for it, and then there's a contraption to make it a little bit smaller, correct? To pull it out. So reach and start that process. But expect each one of these you're going to have to practice multiple times. Eventually, you get to the point where you'll be able to get up, walk over there, reach over, make it uh, looser, reach to the top and pet it up, and she's like this energy the whole time. You pull it up, and when she comes out, she's going to come out nice and relaxed. Will you scratch that for you? Yes. Okay, if you ever see your dog trying to scratch a part of their body, you can actually, they really appreciate it when we scratch because they, we have, they have nails. We don't, well, we have nails, but not like theirs. Well, guardian here might. Um, all right, so um, uh, break that down into small steps and eventually she'll learn to stay calm throughout the whole process. Now, if she's excited for the leash. What I recommend you do is just uh, process, practice leashing her up. And again, the same principle. As soon as she gets excited, you stop. I have a video on my website for a couple of surgeons that I worked with, have a dog uh, not too far away from here uh, named, um, can't remember, uh, 
uh, I can't remember her name, but just type, go to my website, uh, Olive, I think, she's a little Jack Russell. So type in Calm Leash. If you go to doggoneproblems.com, click on where it says dog training tips, you'll admire all the great SEO work that's there. But uh, click on dog training tips, and then all the subjects will be pretty specific as what that the video in that session, this one, it's the focus exercise. Uh, but search on the right of that page and the bottom of the page is a search box. So type in Calm Leash. There's a video where I explain all the details ins and outs, but basically practicing leashing up and is stopping as soon as the dog gets excited. Um, all right, sit. Uh, let me see. Um, we also talked about, and look for ways to delay gratification. When you're not just making your sip before letting her in and out here, but also when you go to Starbucks, you're putting the collar on, uh, you're putting a sweater on her, uh, whatever, you're wiping her paws, whatever it is. Get her in a habit of asking her to do something before you do it for her. Um, all right. We also, the video above talked about the focus exercise, which I think is something that's great if she's, if you catch her before she starts barking. Remember, I want you to, when you're watching, when you're at home watching her, see her ears are up right now. That's a normal body mechanic for a dog like this. If you see her ears back, of course you're not doing it like that. That by itself doesn't mean anything bad, but it's, it's one of those indicators. So if I see the ears back, the dog's licking, flipping its tongue out in a licking form. It's yawning a lot. It's, it's avoiding looking at somebody. Um, it's moving away, it's barking, and there's a lot of baring the teeth. Um, those are all communications I'm not comfortable, I disagree, I don't like. Most of the time we wait until the dog is basically having a, a conniption fit and exploding. That's the worst time, we waited too long. The whole point is to get the dog out of trouble before they feel like they need to. So um, uh, we talked about uh, petting with a purpose and passive training as well. That'd be a good reward for come, pet her. So remember, every time she does things you want, make sure you pet her as quickly as you can. You have three seconds. So she came over, I said, and that was about three seconds by the time she started petting. So you want to be like, come. And I'm using a treat. The guardian here isn't going to have to use the treat, but there is a relative that might be bed with uh, behoove. And what I would do is give that relative a bunch of these treats and not have her try to give any until she starts coming over and asking for them. Then he tells her to sit when she sits. Sit. Worry about giving her treats first instead of the petting her part. After a while, if you want to, you can kind of give her one of these if you do want to pet her. But remember, if you reach for her, or somebody reaches for her and she turns her head away or backs up, that's her way of saying, I, would, I don't want you to pet me. So I always reach this far and she backed away, so I pulled my arm back. She's looking for the treats now. But if she would go forward and touch, then that tells me that yes, it's okay to touch her. But if she doesn't do that and you respect and listen to her, that's gonna make her feel more calm and comfortable and confident and trusting in that person. And we just think petting is okay, but you see what just happened? She didn't want that, so she moved away. So, um, all right, we also talked about, uh, pass, uh, pet, so passive training is just waiting for the dog to organically offer you the behavior. So come up with a word for eating her food, drinking her water, uh, name all of the individual toys in your house, come up with a word that means to speak or bark, um, you know, and uh, go into the dog, uh, dog area that she stays at, go onto the dog bed, um, and anything else unusual that she does that's quirky that you wanna uh, treat her, uh, teach her how to do. Every time she lays on her side, call that flop. Um, so every time she comes to you, you're petting her, say come. Every time she sits, you're petting her, sit, lay down, uh, and so on. Most of us train our dogs to misbehave, remember, because any attention is validating. So they bark, we correct them, and they come and we ignore it. Well, the dog's going to bark to get our attention. So the more that we get in a habit of, uh, of rewarding the desired behaviors, the more likely she's going to do uh, be to engage in them. Now, another one that we do go over is called passive, uh, petting with a purpose, excuse me. Petting with a purpose, so she, right now she wants it treats. I say sit. Sit, and then I like to tickle under the chin. Remember to avoid petting her on top of the head. Always try to tickle under the chin to facilitate that nose up that confident dogs have. So basically when she came over and she told me what to do, if she gave me an order, leaders tell, followers ask. She tells me what to do and I do it. After enough repetition, she thinks she's in charge of me. So what I do instead is when she comes up and nudges me or barks or demands attention, I give her a counter order, tell her to sit. When she sits, then I pet her under her chin and say the word sit and only the word sit and I pet her as much or as little as I want. So you have to pet her at least once, otherwise she'll go back to nudging or jumping up or the rest of that stuff. But eventually she'll start sitting in front of you to prepay for the attention. We does make sure you pet her under the chin and say whatever the command word is. Um, I'm trying to think, uh, make sure you eat something first. I think I, t I missed that one. 
Um, is there anything else that we talked about that you want me to go over? We went over the escalating consequences. I'm not going to do those on video. Uh, message me if you can't remember what those are. Those are one of those secrets you have to actually pay me to have me come and show you how to do. Um, but she's a great little dog. Uh, the treats I use are called Tricky Trainers. Um, right here, make sure you fold it over and burp all the air out of it. As you can see, somebody very much likes these treats. So you can get these on Amazon or Chewy. Uh, the bag, uh, this bag's like seven bucks. You can get a bag that's like three times the size for about 10 bucks. I'd recommend having a couple. Make sure you burp all the air out of it and zip it shut. Otherwise, it'll be hard as M&Ms before you know it. Uh, oh, another good one. Well, she's not gonna do it for me, but a lot of dogs like to come up and lick us. Call it kisses. If I say kisses, my dogs will lick me. If I say love, they lick me right here. So the only time that when they're licking me here, I say love with that passive training. So after a while, you'll be able to say the command word and get the dog to kiss you uh, where you want on command. All right, you want to, all right, you got to move away. Well, this is, I'm ready to sign off. I need you here one more time. Uh, for these treats, just tear them in, into quarters because I think uh, for her size, uh, one is, we just wouldn't need enough to be a motivator for her. All right, well, and remember if she jumps up on top of you and pet her, yeah, I forgot my little signal, uh, but the guardian recognized. But if she jumps up on top of us, that's a way of claiming us. If I pet her when she jumps up on me, that's kind of rewarding that wrong thing. So that could be another thing. If you want her to come and curl up in your lap, call, you know, lapsies or hugs or snuggles or whatever you want. My dog, Max, I lay back like this and he comes and lays on me with his front paws here and then I pet it. And I, we, I call it hug. Um, Granny. Whoa, that's some enthusiasm. This is Granny and this is Granny's Roadmap to Success. Remember, everything you do trains your dog. Only sometimes you mean it.